Hello, uh, my name is uh, Trond Sundby. I work for the Petroleum Safety Authority and uh, I'm following up uh, services systems and pipelines. So a lot of uh, familiar faces that I've met in meetings, supervisory activities, standardization, various reports. So uh, it's good to have uh, a knowledgeable crowd here. Uh, we had a seminar uh, a little bit more than one year ago, uh, very focused on uh, wellhead fatigue, uh, because they were rebuilding our offices. It was in Stavanger Forum. We had a very good crowd there. Uh, it was discussed, what do we do next? How do we take this further? And there was a um, good drive for we need to have uh, an arrangement like this uh, next year as well. Uh, but we, we, we said that um, it isn't necessarily the authorities' um, responsibility to take these initiatives. If there are areas where the industry doesn't have enough knowledge or uh, should work harder, we can try to focus in, this, in, in these areas. But by us repeating seminars, uh, it means that the industry hasn't taken the responsibility. So that's why we chose to make it a little bit broader. Wellhead fatigue is also a part of this. Uh, DNV has uh, written a report for us. Uh, I'll say a little bit about regulatory requirements as well. First, PSA, our overall goal. Uh, from our ministry, set the terms for and follow up that the players in the petroleum industry maintain a high level of health, safety and environment and emergency preparedness, thereby also contri contribute to creating the highest possible values for society. So the most important health, safety and environment, but we shall also uh, look to uh, values for the society. Uh, our authority, uh, regulator for technical and operational safety, including emergency preparedness in uh, all phases of the petroleum activity. It means we can do follow-up supervisory activities in the early planning stages, design, in the fabrication, construction, use, and possible later removal. It's uh, when we go in early, when we go in before uh, concept selection before plan for development and operations, uh, our uh, regulatory tools are not as strong as when the plan for development and operation is handed in and uh, accepted by, by the ministries. But, but still, there is a, a lot of things we can do in the early phases and uh, I know from the operators and also the suppliers like that we come in early and and give our advices there rather than come in late and say that we would have expected you to do, do this, but it's it, it, it's not not according to the regulations. So uh, that's been our strategy the last few years as well to try and get in as early as possible. Uh, we have uh, ma annual main priorities. Uh, we've had them for many years and a lot of them has followed us for many years as well, but the focus changes a little bit. A new one for this year is the far north. We see that a lot of the activities in the coming years will be in the northern areas, also in other parts of the world. Uh, there is uh, developments going on in northern areas. There are some challenges that needs to be addressed there. When it comes to subsea systems, um, on the Norwegian continental shelf, it might be that the far north isn't, uh, or that we're going north isn't the biggest challenge at the moment. There are other challenges with the distance uh, and remoteness, no infrastructure, which is not directly connected to, to being far north. Uh, barriers, we've had that as a focus area for many years as well. Uh, we wrote a document a few years ago to um, detail out how we interpret what's in the regulations. 
it's not a legally binding uh, guideline as the guidelines to the regulations, but still it is our, our view on how barriers shall be treated. Uh, groups at particular risks uh, may be less relevant for subsidy systems, but still uh, it's a focus area that we've had for many years. Uh, noise has been an area that we worked hard with. Uh, the focus has changed slightly the last few years. What we see is that contractor suppliers is uh, often more exposed than operators personnel. Uh, management and major accident risks has been a priority for the last few years as well. Uh, saying that to avoid major accidents or to reduce the risk for major accidents, you need to involve management and management needs to get their message through all the organization. Uh, I'm not going into detail about this, but this is part of the document for barrier management. This is an example for, from operation. Uh, barrier is quite important when it comes to subsidy systems as well. Uh, it's important to define the context, uh, analysis, or do analysis and risk, treat the risks, then you get a plant specific barrier strategy performance requirements, performance standards, and you follow up this in operation. These might change. So barrier management, the way we see it, is a continuous operation. Uh, and you need to be aware of dependency on barriers, the performance of them if someone are, if barriers aren't functioning as they should, and also focus on both all technical, operational and organizational elements. This is our area of rep responsibility. It's, this is a slightly old version, but uh, it's about 320 subsidy templates on the Norwegian continental shelf. It's 185 uh, multi-well templates and 135 uh, single-well templates. They're mainly in this area and in this area. We see some developments further north. Uh, yeah, about 80, 85 uh, on uh, facilities, fixed facilities. These are, it's just an illustration of subsidies facilities with the startup year. We had a big chunk of installations in the 90s, late 90s, early 2000. It hasn't been that many after that, but uh, the last few years we've seen a lot of tiebacks, a lot of fast track projects from, from Start Oil. So uh, we expect a further increase when I in, in the coming years. The blue is multi-well templates, the red is single-well templates, and the miscellaneous part is manifolds and plems and various parts on connected to the subsidy systems. Our regulations. Uh, I remember I was at uh, uh, UTC in Bergen last year and there were discussions, questions, and someone was arguing that we need more regulations. I was a bit surprised because the industry usually don't ask for more regulations. Uh, our regulations are risk-based uh, and they're based on performance or functional requirements, meaning that there aren't much details there. Uh, that's the way they've developed, uh, meaning that you need standards. You need some uh, internal requirements or, sta uh, or uh, accepted standards uh, to follow up uh, the regulations. By having the functional requirements, it gives the industry freedom to, sh to choose sh solutions. We don't limit uh, how you should develop a field, how you should operate a field. Uh, we just give some frameworks saying that you should comply with this. Also, 
supports the placement of responsibility, saying that the operator is the responsible. Uh, references to norms and industry standards to provide predictability for users and indicate the expected standard of the solutions. Uh, there are guidelines following this, so in the guidelines we get a little bit more into the details, but not much. The framework uh, regulations uh, covers, it gives principles for risk reduction, it says something about use of recognized standards, HSE culture, prudent activities. In the management regulations, it's further with risk reduction, risk management, the barrier are mentioned there, uh, management elements like acceptance criteria, performance indicators are highlighted, the analysis part, and continuous improvement and follow-up. When it comes to the activities regulations, it's mainly about the operation of fac facilities, monitoring and control. Maintenance is quite an important part of the activities regulations. The facilities regulations is the design of installations, focuses on robust solutions. It mentions strategy, barrier strategy, physical barriers, safety functions, and loads. A uh, little bit from the regulations. This is from the facilities regulations, section 10 and 11. Installation systems and equipment says uh, facilities should be designed in the most robust and simple manner. In the Norwegian continental shelf, when it comes to subsea solutions, we see a lot of quite complex uh, installations. Uh, it doesn't contradict with that. We've, we've developed over time, so still uh, <laughs> they can be uh, regarded as robust solutions. If they're simple, uh, they are as simple as uh, we require them to be to fulfill the, uh, the performances they should. Uh, possibility for human error is limited. Uh, and can be operated, tested, and maintained without risk to the personnel and with the lowest possible risk of pollution. Suitable for use, withstand the loads actions they can be expo exposed to. And that's all loads. Uh, and also in section 11, loads shall be combined in the most unfavorable manner. Again, able to withstand the design loads, actions, and probable combinations of these loads, actions at all times. Then we have barriers and safety functions. Barriers is um, section 5 of the management regulations. Says that barriers shall be established that reduce the probability of failures and hazards and accident situations from developing. Limit the possible harm. There shall be independence between the barriers and then shall stipulate strategies and princi principles that form the basis for design, use and maintenance of barriers. Then in section 8, sa safety functions, says that facilities shall be equipped with necessary safety functions, detect abnormal conditions, prevent abnormal conditions from developing and limit the damage. So. Uh, we don't say how you should do it. In the guidelines, there aren't... Um, uh, we, we don't refer to a lot of detailed standards saying how to do this for subsea systems. We refer to the international subsea standards and the NORSOC, but uh, there is uh, quite a wide room for fulfilling these requirements. Uh, to sum up, um, this is the report that DNV made for us. Uh, we uh, they got a, an assignment last year and finished it uh, February this year. It was put on our web page uh, last week. So it summarizes uh, challenges with subsystems, some developments, some historical data, and a little bit what we see in the future. Uh, 
then some summaries from us, important areas which uh, the industry needs to tackle, updating standards with the latest experience. We will hear more about standards later, but still the, the backbone of the functional requirements are updated standards. Integrity management of subsidy systems. There are a lot of initiatives for establishing uh, complete uh, overall integrity management systems for uh, uh, subsidy systems. You need, in the future, continuous monitoring. You need to document your processes. It's still important to uh, also document the history. Training and expertise. I think getting access to competent pe personnel will not be less of a challenge in the future. Sharing information like we do here today with the report to have continuous improvement. Research and development, important. Reporting incidents, it's also important. These are publications. Some of them are available at the back here and they are also available at our web page. Thank you, Trond. Is it any questions for Trond? Everything is clear? <laughs> Not very controversial so far. <laughs> Okay, thank you, Trond. And then uh, we can ask uh, Björn Sørgård from DNVGL to come from. <laughs>